It's been a very cold day today and I thought it'd be good to come out and collect some materials as we had so much wet weather and now we're getting frost. A lot of the cramp balls, the fungus that I quite like using for tinder, tends to perish at this time of year and when you pick it they just crush and explode in your hand because they're so damp inside and you know they've rotted through. I've also picked some really nice Ganoderma brackets as well which are good for tinder. So um, I'm going to dry those out by the fire. But while I'm out here and now the smoke's died down on this fire I've been asked quite a lot of questions about how to do the paracord wrap and attach the barnacle pouch to the uh, SE6 sheath or any kind of sheath really. So once I've got some more wood and I've got this built up a bit more, get some nice embers going and warm up a bit, I'll uh, go through how you can do that.
So for those of you who are familiar with my setup and have requested the, the video of me to show you how to do this wrap and put the pouch on, you'll probably see there's something a bit different about my setup and I've got the Molle uh, back plate on now. I really just bought that just to make it a bit more modular for me so I can quickly you know, detach my knife and store it away and uh, obviously keep this part on my belt and it just, uh, it's just a bit more of a secure setup and I do prefer it but whether you've got this standardised back plate or the Molle pack um, or back plate even you can do the paracord wrap and put the pouch on it really doesn't matter um, so what I'll do is um, just take this whole thing apart and uh, then show you how to do the wrap and how to put the pouch on so a number of things you're going to need to um, to be able to do this probably the first thing obviously you'll need the knife I've got an SE6 with this sheath on and it's got eyelets on it the eyelets aren't really essential but it does allow you to do a, a slightly different type of um, attachment with the pouch and the paracord and I'll show you that later you, you'll need some paracord any kind of color of your choice and um, you will need a lot of it so just use a lot more than you think you will need and just cut it short when you've finished um, you'll need something to attach the pouch to the paracord I use annex clips annex clips are, are really great um, they're available pretty much anywhere I got these on eBay if you just type in annex clips you can come across lots of different copy ones which are just as good or the real thing which is what these are um, it really doesn't make a huge amount of difference but you can see there that they go through the molle and allow you to just connect pouches up and clip onto various different types of molly I use them on the side of things on my pack that are optional and that go on my belt kit every now and then you know they'll just live on the side until I need them and it just makes this de detachable from the um, paracord so you can take it off and you don't have to use it with a knife if you don't want to so it just makes the whole setup a bit more modular but I'll put a link in the description for these below and obviously you'll need a pouch I use the Maxpedition Barnacle you don't really need to use that pouch anything that you want really to go on the side you can use these annex clips to uh, to connect them on and they're very very versatile and also whether you use the standard Molle clip that goes on the back the the plastic clip that comes with the SE sheath or you use the um, the Molle plate that goes on the back it really doesn't matter I would suggest though if you do have this component and you're going to use this with your sheath you connect that up first and bolt it on and then you do the paracord wrap around the two um, it's just a better setup that way because it means the cord can be taken off and this setup remains the same if you bind the cord through the eyelets as you take the cord off this becomes loose and it eventually does work its way loose in time and, and starts to be a bit more flimsy so it's good to bolt these two together before you do the wrap so just bear that in mind I'm going to be demonstrating it with this um, with this sort of molle plate at the back so I'm not going to be using this clip I'm going to be connecting that to there and doing the wrap and showing you how to do it and then putting the pouch on so first of all we take the sheath we take some paracord and you, you get about a foot long of paracord just like that and uh, you just lie it on top of the sheath and then at the, the long end which goes over to your reel of paracord or however long it stretches on for 50 meters 25 meters you wrap that round that knuckle at the top there so you've got one short bit just there and one really long bit that goes on forever and the short bit just stays like that and the long bit goes over the top of the short bit you can fold the short bit underneath and then it folds round so you can see it's, it's gone over the top and around the short bit and it comes round again and you pull it fairly tight and it goes over the top of the short bit again and round over the top of the short bit again and round and again over the top of the short bit and around again and you probably guessed it it goes over the top of the short bit so you can see you're just looping it round and it's going over and around again and you just keep going like that and the reason I call it a rib cage wrap is it just reminds me of a spine with some ribs on it I, as I say that's that's not the proper name for it I, I don't really know what the proper name is so do you forgive me on that one 
But that's it, we just keep going round and round and round. And over the top again. I usually pinch that with my with my thumb and go back round because if you're if you're too loose with it, it's not really going to hold too well. You want to pull it quite tight, but not too tight that it starts pulling away and becoming off centre like that. So make sure it's on centre, but nice and taut. And really, you can stop wherever you want. That's actually enough cord to connect the pouch up. Because really, what's going to happen? is these annex clips are going to thread underneath those ribs and sit like that and the pouch can be clipped on and then locked into place and that's exactly how it works. So as you can see at the size of the annex clip you don't really need a lot of paracord at all. Um, well you probably need a, a, you know, a fair few meters but if, if you wanted to cut it short and you just wanted that much paracord on you um, yeah, you don't really need to go to go crazy and put loads and loads on if you don't want to. So you can see now we've finished doing that. There might be little gaps between the uh, the ribs, and you might see the spines a bit curved. If you really want to straighten it up, just take that main short piece of cord that runs central, and just pull it and move it left and right, and give it quite a bit of welly, and it'll just tighten all that up for you. You can align it all. But remember, you don't want the top to be too tight on this SE6 sheath because you'll never be able to get your knife out once you put it in because it'll be gripping the, the two pieces of plastic together too, too much. So if this top bit's a bit loose and you want to tighten it up, just pull on that main line and it, and it makes that, that loop shorter. Alternatively, go the other way as well. And... Uh, and it'll do a similar thing, it'll, it'll make the, uh, the loop much smaller. So you can then thread that back over the top once you've shortened it slightly. And you just have a nice lip at the top. And you can just move all this up. You can see there, it's looking nice and neat now. Um, to the point where I, I was down here before with all that paracord, but now I've tidied it all up, I've used up all that excess space. And it's brought it all back up. So I can use the rest of my cord now. Um, and continue on down until I get to about those two eyelets and then realign it again and um, yeah and just make it nice and neat before I before I finish it off so I'll carry on so there we go they're roughly about the same length now as I've got to the end and it's time to sort of tidy things up again um, which is pretty easy to do as you've seen you just take that main forget about that that's the bit that's been wrapping around this is the main line just tighten that up lines everything nicely and then really it's just how you want to finish that off at the end you, you may want to do your own kind of sort of knotted technique at the end where you plait it all together for me I just put this through here like that same with the other one. Back round through itself. And all that does is putting those two things threaded through each other there. And it creates a barrier to stop it sliding down. Because in time this will make its way down, whether you like it or not, it will it will sort of go on the move as you do. And uh yeah, it will, it will hit those two knuckles there and it won't be able to go any further. Um, so it will it will sort of loosen up a bit. Ideally, you just make, just use more cord than me if you want it down to those two eyelets and really stack it up against those two, those two little knuckles there and then it won't go anywhere and you'll have a real nice tight wrap all the way up. But you can just take those two pieces then and just thread those through these bottom eyelets. Just like that, you know, and tie these off somewhere if you want to, or get a toggle. Put a toggle on it for the time being. I'm just going to do that. It doesn't look particularly great, but for the purpose of the video, you can see there. There's the paracord wrap, all nice and finished. Got that nice spine down there. The other side's pretty flush. 
Um, yeah, and it's a, it's a good wrap to use. I use this on the HFX slingshot as well, if any of you are wondering. And I will be doing a video about that too, because I have been asked to do it. But now it's time to put these uh, annex clips in. So remember, if you're going to use this component here, you ideally want that underneath there. Although if you have already done it, it's not the end of the world. Because obviously you get these screws with this kind of setup. And um, the easy thing to do if you have done that and you think, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to bolt this straight through. You just move the ribs out of the way just like that and you just place the screw in you know, the corresponding little nut that goes in and just push the ribs back over the top again and there it is hidden underneath and you've got those in there and the other side you can just reveal that away put this on put the screw through and you can bolt that straight on like that if you really want to and you want it to, to look a bit more flush but I just had the cord wrapped around mainly so I could just take the cord off. I'm going to bolt this on here, which is really easy to do. Um, like I showed you, just move the ribs aside, put the nut in, push the ribs back over. Um, you can just reveal them open at the back there and you can see the nut. That can just go straight on. The little bolt goes through. I'll use a screwdriver in a minute. Got a little multi-tool there. And don't, you don't want to do it up really tight straight away. You want, to, you want it as loose as it can be really because then you can push the ribs back like that and preferably get them off of this thumb push at the top or else you'll find that it'll tighten up too much on the grip. You won't be able to get the knife out that easily. And then tighten them up once you've moved the power cord over the top of the screw. And it'll just look a bit better. You can just yeah, sort that out. And there you go. So that's bolted on quite nicely. I'm just going to do the other set. So again, just shift that out of the way. And that goes on. Ribs can go back over the top. And at the back, just reveal them as well. Out of the way. Put the bolt in. Make sure it's nice and loose. So you can see if it's loose, you've got a gap, and you can just then push those ribs over the top. You don't even see it then, and just tighten it up. So we go, I've put four bolts in there. You can leave that flap if you want at the bottom so you have available cord to take away. You can just unravel that and reel it all off like I showed you, it comes off really easily. Um, and then obviously just keep enough cord there to hold your pouch on if you need it. So it is quite a useful setup in that respect. But what I'll do is I'll show you how to put the, um, the clips on now. So now it's just time to decide whereabouts you want the pouch to be held on the sheath. Do you want it low? Do you want it high? I have it quite high. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take one of my annex clips and I'll just find some of the ribs that are sort of sticking out and perhaps a bit loose. You only really need two. And it just threads through really easily like that. And that's it. That's one of the clips threaded on. And then the other side you do something similar. You'll notice that the, uh, the ribs will be slightly misaligned but that's not a big deal. And on there it goes, just like that. And uh, that will just hold on there quite securely. And then what you can do is just take the pouch. Obviously just thread those annex clips through the back there of the molly. Once you've threaded them through, you can just lock them in place. And they'll be locked on. Just like that. With my torch there, I've just got a little clip there. Just goes down through the molle like that. And this lanyard comes round the back just here and goes over the top of the head of the torch. And that just secures it on and stops it getting pulled off and it disappearing somewhere and me not having a torch. So that's the setup. So guys, I hope that really helped on how 
I connected the pouch up to the SE6 and the paracord wrap used. Um, you know, this setup might not be for everyone, um, I really like it, but you may see it and think, you know, I don't really like that, I'm going to do something different and that's, um, you know, that's fair enough, it's, it's not suited for everyone, but um, I've been asked so many times to, to show the setup that, uh, you know, it's pretty rude of me not to. <laughs> I've been putting it off for so so long, you know, I didn't want to unravel everything, but you know, now I've got this Mollet backplate, it's a good excuse to, to do a video and show a variation. But I will be modifying this slightly in the future, you know, when I come across something that doesn't work quite right. Generally when I make a change is I'm, I'm out doing something and something's just not quite right, so you have to kind of work on it and make it a bit better, make it work for you, make your life easier. So um, thanks for watching and I appreciate all the comments and I hope this video has helped out. Thank mm -hmm. you.